This is an introduction to exercise 9D on planar graphs and Euler's formula on page 425. And the question we're asking today is what is Euler's formula and how do we use it? Now again, please don't say Euler. I know it's very tempting, but the name is Euler. Uh, now, planar graphs, of course, I talk, I did talking about planes. So not, not planes in the one that fly in the sky, but planes in the one that make up a two-dimensional flat area. So a planar graph can be drawn on a plane so that no edges intersect except at the vertices. So breaking that down, all we're saying is that the only time that our lines or our edges touch each other is only at the vertices. Some of you guys might have been drawing some, some like, uh, how do I even describe it? Some more, some of these graphs. I don't know if you guys have seen these before. Some, some people do one of these. And sometimes they look like they can intersect. Please make sure you don't do that because, again, it could be mistaken as a non-planar graph. So, yes, anything that, if you draw it on paper, because a piece of paper represents a plane, uh, has no edges intersect except at those vertices. So, looking at the example over here, a non-planar graph, we can rearrange it by moving the, the vertex D into the middle so that we still have the same edges connecting the same vertices. It's just that they are, they don't intersect. The lines don't overlap. Okay. Just to be clear, uh, this is still considered one edge just because it's connecting two vertices. And you can see that if we move the vertex D, we can still see it's one edge. All right. It's not representing two edges there. That is incorrect. Graph 2, that's obviously, as we mentioned, a planar form of graph 1. However, not all graphs can be drawn into planar graphs. So the one on the right-hand side cannot be drawn into a planar graph. Uh, and the reason why I'm talking about planar graphs in general is because there is a formula that we will be using that can tell us the number of edges and or vertices or whatever it is in a much simpler format. Right? So we're making a generalized problem even more generalized. Uh, in this example, we have to redraw the graph shown opposite in a planar form. Can I get everyone to give this one a shot? It's super easy. I'll give you guys about 30 seconds. Just try to re move the dots around, whatever it is, so that, or, or the edges, sorry, so that your graph looks to be the same. It's still isomorphic. Uh, that's some callback from exercise 9c, but it has no intersections in the edges except at the vertices. So give it a shot. I'll give you guys 30 seconds starting now. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves if you need to. Note there are going to be many, many possible answers. Okay, how'd you guys go? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Okay. All right, so for me, the first thing I'm going to do is just draw the vertices out and see if I can rearrange the edges because I feel like that's the easiest option. So A, B, D, and C. Now, I'm going to draw all the lines that make sense to me until I get to drawing one that would intersect. So I'm going to draw A to D. And I'm going to draw D to B, B to C, and I'll notice that if I draw that C to A line, it's going to intersect, isn't it? Watch this. Whoa. There you go. There's a graph that's uh, playing up. Easy. Any questions? You can just move edges around, but it means the same thing, doesn't it? Now, the actual length of the line that you draw does not matter. Later on, we'll assign values to each one of those edges, right? We'll give it a number. Perhaps it's the number of kilometers or how long it takes, right? But the actual length of the line you draw does not matter. All right, let's jump into Euler's formula. Now, Euler proposed that there's this idea of faces, right? And the idea is that faces of a graph are just the region separated or created when you have those lines interlocking. Okay? In other words, in mathematical terms, the faces of a graph are regions separated or created by edges and vertices. I should say vertices. So you can see on the right-hand side, uh, you've got the graph that's, that, that goes from A, B, C, D, E, F, and the edges in between. 
Now, the, the most common mistake I've seen with a question like this is that they neglect the fourth phase. Now, you can see here, there's this phase over here, that region separated, easy. There's a region separated over here as well, one over here. So, a lot of students will say three. However, because you've got a fully enclosed graph, it makes sense that you've created another region, another area, that's just everything outside of the graph. That would be our fourth phase in this circumstance, so please don't forget that. Any questions so far? Alright, so all this formula only works for planar graphs, to be clear. Only works for planar graphs. It does not work if two edges intersect where it's not a vertex. And this formula is the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces always equals to 2. Always. And we can use that property to, uh, to figure out some basic stuff without having to draw out the graph or count the number of things. If we know the number of, for example, vertices and edges, we can know the number of faces. We just need two bits of information and we can tell us a third without having to do a bunch of calculations. So, let's uh, prove it. Consider the connected planar graph shown. Now, of course, if it didn't say it was planar, the first thing I would do is double check that it is, right? Because this formula, again, only works when it's planar. Write down the number of vertices, edges, and faces, which is commonly shortened by their corresponding first letters. So, number of vertices. Let's start there. Super easy. Casper, go for it. Easy. Edges. Charlie. Can I get you to help me out? How many edges are there? Uh, six. One, two, three, oh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that what you said? I'm happy with six. Here's a trickier one. Let's see. Can you tell me how many faces there are? Four. So you're saying one, two, three, four? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. That is four. So we end up with that answer there. So we've written the number of vertices, edges, and faces. To verify Euler's formula, all we have to do is substitute that back in. So the formula again, and it's shortened on the left as V minus E plus F. So V is 4 minus E, which is 6, plus F, which is 4, should equal to 2. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, it's true. Therefore, have you guys seen those three dots before? Yes? Yeah. It just means therefore, if you haven't seen it, Euler's formula Applies. Done. Pretty straightforward. Any questions? Any fuzziness around the topic? Go for it. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if I heard the faces part. Mm -hmm. So, I'll flick back over here. Faces, again, it's just the region separated by the line. So, if I have anything that's enclosed, right? Anything that's enclosed, in, enclosed, sorry, that's a face. This one's enclosed by these four edges there. That's four. Yes, four edges there. Whereas face number two is enclosed by these three here. So anything that's enclosed, fully enclosed. All right? But then the other idea is that if it's on the outside, because the graph itself is enclosed by this set of edges, isn't it? Yeah? There's another face on the outside of it as well. Yeah. Correct. You could just do that. Exactly right. Awesome.